Okay, so it's RBD time. So what do we want to do? Well, what we first want to do is we want to go into our landscape. Essentially, what we uh, need to do is we need to sort of cut a hole in our landscape and then use the piece that's, that's over there and then shatter it and then start blasting it outward. So kind of what we first maybe want to do is we want to make sure that uh, the part that we're going to blast out is in the center of our uh, scene. So why do I want to put it in the center? Uh, it's just easy. Like everything, if it's centered, zero, 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 you always know where something is going to end up. That's what you generally do in production a lot. Um, not always, of course, but let's say you get a uh, like another scene, like for example, a, uh, a car driving uh, through the desert or something. Uh, and you have a car and it's like oriented like at a 45 degree angle and it's well like making a sort of a well it's it's and it's like uh, super far out in the distance well what you will probably do is you will transform the car to the center of the scene then you rotate it straight and then when you're going to do your pyro sim at least your pyro box will be oriented in the direction of your car you don't have any issues of like the a bounding box getting a lot bigger. I know there's also a spar solver now, but in general, uh, it's just better to sort of keep it clean, keep it organized like that. And then you also don't have to deal with orientations of your, uh, of your, of your smoke object, which is possible, but you know, if you don't have to deal with it, you don't wanna have to deal with it. So then you will just simulate everything in that space and then transform it back to where it originally was. So you just invert those transforms. In this case, of course, we don't have to do any of that, but if we are gonna do all these simulations, might as well put everything in the center. Uh, we are working around the, the, the center right now anyway, so it's just gonna be easier for us down the line. So let's center everything. So let's make just make a sphere. Um, we can use to sort of check the center. So let's view it and move it upwards a little bit. Let's make it Polygon, and let's view this and then template our sphere. Okay, so you see our top is not quite in the center, so let's move it a little bit like this, maybe. Also, our camera is maybe not oriented properly, so let's move. So let's just move the null. So let's do it like this. This is also nice why you can, if you have a null like this, uh, that, what we're, that we can use for the shake. We can also use it to offset our camera, even though our camera has keys. So then we don't have to mess with those keys. So it's another added benefit. And of course you can add more nulls in between here if you wanted to. So anyway, so now this is looking better. You can move the sphere down. Now in our entire scene is centered. Now something else we probably need to do is this these rocks look uh, blue, so the normals are probably inverted. So if we press the normal, you can see uh, the normals are pointing down. It's probably not what we want. So let's use a reverse. Let's reverse these normals outward, else we're gonna have issues later when we're gonna do a Boolean to sort of cut this part out. But yeah, like this uh, is looking quite decent. So I guess, now we can start cutting out some part. Oh, we need to do one more thing, which we need to give this uh, this thing some volume, because late, like if we want to cut out a part, we kind of it needs to have some sort of depth, right? Also, we're going to use it for collisions later. We need to have it needs to have some volume anyway, because rigid body uh, collisions are generally uh, volumetric collisions. I'll talk more about that later, but. Um, so let's extrude, but not the regular extrude. Let's use extrude volume. That is just set up to extrude a volume. So now we have a extruded volume, and then we can cut a part out of that. So let's just look through our camera. Perfect. All right. Let's uh, let's continue. Okay. So let's make the sphere a little bit bigger. Maybe two. Let's increase the frequency. And let's add some deformation. 
so it looks a little bit more interesting so a little bit more like a rock or something so i guess something like that decrease roughness okay and now let's do a boolean let's put a boolean over here and then put a sphere in there and now you can see our sphere cut a hole in the ground perfect so we want to copy and paste this thing and then do it the other way around probably not use intersect then yeah that's what we want so now we also have this piece that we can then so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to shatter this piece and then this part will be our part of the ground that we're going to use for collisions and stuff so let's put it like that and let's make some nulls i guess call this piece not pies piece let's remove this out because we don't really need it and i call this the ground all righty so let's uh Let's shatter this, uh, this piece over here. Okay, so let's shatter this part that we have here. And for once, I will actually be using the uh, rigid body sublevel tools. Uh, generally, a lot of times when I do rigid bodies, I don't really use them. Even though they're super easy to use, uh, if you want more control, I don't really like them that much. For example, the, so that we have the, uh, the shatter, for example, the, uh, it's called again, it's called RBT fracture, RBT fracture. It's quite nice uh, if you just have to do simple one-off fractures, but because it has all of the tools for chipping and multiple fractures built in, it's easy to use, but I, I do think that it's, it can sort of uh, get quite heavy if you use it, uh, for example, in production, like, you might, if you use it in production, you might want a little bit more control. Like you might just want to do your own basic fracture and then build your own sort of secondary fracture thing. And I know you can just break this open and then go in here and start manipulating it in there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just, it's a little bit on the slower side for uh, some stuff. But in this case, we only have to fracture one thing. And in that case, it's quite nice. So let's do that. So let's plug it in here. You can see it's gonna start doing stuff. So let's do an exploded view. So you can see it uh, it outputs some pieces. So probably we want some more pieces. So let's do initial points. Let's maybe do uh, whatever, let's uh, try 50. So we get 50 initial points. And let's, uh, or sorry, 50 initial points and then a couple of secondary points. Let's do so essentially it's sort of a subfracture that it's doing. Uh, probably you want to do some Oh, and it's set to concrete, by the way, because we wanted to fracture it as being concrete. Probably also want some edge detail. That's gonna add some edges, which you can see it's already getting quite slow. So it's probably a little bit too much detail. So I'm gonna put this on manual. Set the element size to be a little bit higher. Rotate it. Mm. Let's change the detail size. Yeah, okay, so that was the one that we need to change. These tools that much. Maybe let's do this one.
Okay, so let's say that uh, this is good for now. And I guess let's cash this out now.